And here we are, the very first painting in our lesson series. Reference images as well as practice images will be in the description. The first four paintings, so beginner to intermediate, will be from the game Fez. If you haven't played the game or you haven't even heard of it and you don't care about games, that's totally fine. There is a link to the game in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Otherwise, just enjoy the process and you'll still learn a lot. The reason I chose Fez is because the art is simplistic but also becomes very complex in many ways. We're gonna start out a simple sprite of Gomez and his fez and each painting will become a little more complex and with each painting the pixels will either get smaller or we'll start to remove those pixels. So why are we doing pixel art to learn how to paint? Painting pixels makes you slow down. It teaches you patience and it teaches you to trust the process of painting. When you start a painting it kind of looks like nothing. And then suddenly when you're about three quarters of the way through, your hard work really starts to show and you begin to gain this ability to trust yourself to make the right decisions even when you're not seeing immediate results. And as you take the journey to perfect your pixels, you learn more about how your paint reacts to the canvas, how to move your hands to get the paint to unload from your brushes in a very controlled way. And you'll build this understanding with your tools that becomes pretty invaluable. Pixel art is an excellent stepping stone to learning how to paint with acrylics. If you did not see the last video on materials, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, let's get started. Remember to take this lesson at your own pace. You can just blow through it the first time and then come back and rewatch it, or you can pause it as you go, whatever is easiest for you. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment or contact me. So obviously you'll need your paint. For Gomez, you just need white, yellow, black, and red. You will need a ruler, but don't worry, I did the math for you. You'll just need these to measure out and make the straight lines. And you will need a pencil. You can use the pencil that I suggested or your own, just make sure that it's really sharp and that it stays sharp. And then some basic Taclon paint brushes. I also went over this in the materials videos. You can just use what you got. And then choose a color for the background. Whatever color you want, it's not necessarily important. I happen to have this kind of seafoam color handy, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then get yourself a little cup of soapy water and a rag for your paint brushes. And those are the materials that you need for this painting. So get your photo reference, which I have provided for you below. And you can look at it however you need to, whether that's on your phone or a tablet, the monitor right in front of you, maybe print it out on a piece of paper, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that we need to have enough space for 19 pixels tall and 13 pixels wide. I happen to have an 11 by 14 inch canvas, so that makes it pretty easy for me. For this painting in particular, I can comfortably use half inches to make my grid. It doesn't matter what unit you are measuring in. The only thing that matters is that you can fit 19 blocks tall to 13 blocks wide. I've also decided to keep my canvas in landscape format instead of portrait, but that's simply for ease of filming. You can turn your canvas however you feel comfortable. So if my canvas is 14 inches wide and 11 inches tall, if I make my grid half inches, then my area becomes 28 by 22, which can comfortably fit a sprite that's 19 blocks high and 13 wide. If you only have a canvas or a surface, it's kind of a weird measurement, like this smaller four by four inch canvas, then you'll need to do just a little bit of math. You can even switch up your unit of measurement to make it a little bit easier if you want or need. So for this small canvas, you could either do eighth inches or half centimeters, but don't let the math scare you away. Either you can look up the conversion or maybe just ask a friend to help you. This isn't some grade school test where you're gonna get in trouble for cheating. Measuring this grid line is very important important. So take your time. This will be one of those areas where you learn a little bit of patience. You know, maybe turn on some music, listen to a good podcast, or you can just listen to your pencil move across the texture of the canvas. But you need to think of this as the setup for the rest of your painting. If you give your painting a good foundation, there's a better chance that there won't be any confusion or weird lines and it'll hold up better. Start your measurements going from left to right. Don't use the end of the ruler to start your measurement. You want to use the very first line on the ruler to start the measurement. This will have more consistent results. 
Really take that time and be patient. Make sure that your lines get above exactly where they need to be. So that when you do your second set of lines, because you need two sets of measurements in order to ensure that you're gonna have parallel lines, everything will be lined up appropriately and you won't have a bunch of weird wiggly pixels. You're gonna have enough working against you as you learn how to perfect pixel painting. Controlling your grid lines is just one less thing that you need to worry about. So just take your time and do it right. I can't stress that enough. When you begin to draw your grid lines, I recommend that you go from right to left. This way your ruler isn't blocking any lines and you're less likely to accidentally connect the wrong points. Now you can do this any way you want. You can go from left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever works best for you. But I have found this works for me. And make sure that you are keeping that pencil nice and sharp. As your lead dolls, it becomes a little wider. It might not make much of a difference when we're making making half inch pixels. But in the next painting, we're gonna do pixels that are quite a bit smaller and those wider lines can accidentally create inaccurate measurements. And that makes a difference when you have very small pixels. So here I just chose to speed up the footage by about four times instead of skipping along because I want you to see that it is a process. Sometimes when we watch these tutorial videos, they skip around and it kind of gives you the idea that it's a little easier than what it is. And then when you go to try it yourself, you get a little discouraged or impatient. I'll just outright say it, gritting a canvas sucks, but it's necessary. When it's done, it's done and you'll be happy you did it right. Next, you need to get your reference image and you gotta do some counting. Within your canvas space, you wanna do your best to kind of center the sprite. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but it just needs to look okay. And you don't want, you know, like the fez cut off or the feet cut off. And all you're gonna do is just count your areas. If your mind starts to get a little lost in some of the pixels, especially in those white areas, because there's a lot of broad white areas, it's easy to lose count. Keep in mind where your colors are or where different shades maybe use the fez or the eyes or some of the shadows on his left side to help you gauge where the pixels are as you draw it onto the canvas don't get too out of control with these lines make sure you're keeping your pencil sharp and if you make a mistake that's okay that's why we have erasers more than likely you're not going to be able to completely erase a mistake and that's fine all you need to do is erase what you can try not to hurt the integrity of the grid as much as possible and then go through and redraw how it's supposed to be drawn make sure it's a little bit darker and then when you get paint on the canvas it'll cover the rest of it part of this process is being okay with making mistakes and learning learning how to correct it and move forward with confidence. If you are uncomfortable with how wiggly your sketched lines may turn out, you can absolutely just take your ruler and use that as just a normal straight edge to make these pixels perfectly straight if you feel that's going to help you during your painting process. Do whatever you need short of taping or masking to make this process work for you.
All right, well, now you can get your palette or whatever it is you're using to hold your paint. I don't know, maybe that's a piece of aluminum foil or a plate or whatever it is that you have. I do recommend that you have some kind of palette with a, with a lid though, but we covered that in the materials video. And I'll start out with my background color, putting that in the largest section because I'll need the most amount of that paint. The red for the fez. Now I'm not doing any kind of precise color matching for this painting. We're sticking to the basics. We'll get to more precise color matching when we start the intermediate paintings. So just get all the paint on your palette. And then when it comes to the white, you wanna fill three of the spaces with white. That's because we need not only the white, but we also need to create two different types of gray for the shadowing on the one side of the body. Then you wanna add a little bit of black to two of those sections of white. You wanna add more to one than the other because one needs to be darker than the other. And if this doesn't quite do it, or we need to go back and adjust the colors later, we can do that. And then you need your bottle of water. At least I am going to thin out my paints. I discussed why I prefer very fluid paints in the materials video, we covered viscosity pretty in depth. If you have any further questions about that, please let me know. I'll be happy to clarify whatever I can. So I'm going to get the water mixed up in this really well. I'm not worried about adding any kind of additives to this. For certain paintings, sometimes I would add something like GAC 800, but for this in particular, just adding water to it, making sure that each color is very well mixed and thinned out evenly. This is the point where you start to learn about your paint. You begin to build that relationship with your your tools. And I know that might sound a little funny, but it's true. You depend on your tools and you need to be able to understand how your tools are going to respond in different situations. Or if you add things to your paint or how paint of a particular viscosity will drip from your brush or unload from your brush, how to move your brush to get straight lines or how to move your brush to blend colors appropriately. Even though that's not something that we're going to cover in this painting. That will be in the future though. That does it for the setup for the painting. Now we just need to paint. I am going to start with what I like to call the sloppy coats. Now you don't want the sloppy coats to get too out of control. You want them to stay within the lines because you end up losing track of where your lines are supposed to be. But the point of this first coat of paint isn't to be perfect. It's just to get paint onto the canvas. More than likely, you'll need to do a few coats of paint and that's where more of that patience comes in. So this very first coat of paint that isn't the most perfect really comes in handy. So I like to get this first sloppy coat onto the sprite, let that kind of dry and set up a little bit. While that's drying, I'll move on to the background. And usually you want to complete the background before you put those final coats on the foreground. And the beauty of not having this on an easel is that we can turn and move the canvas as needed. It makes it a little easier to make sharp corners and to just generally have easier access to the areas you want to paint. When you put your paintbrush into the paint, you don't want to just dunk the paintbrush straight into the paint. That will force paint paint right up into the ferrule, which is really hard to clean out. And then your bristles will be splayed in a way that just isn't useful, at least not for pixel art. So carefully place maybe the first third of the paintbrush into the paint and remove a little bit of that excess of paint. And as you become more comfortable with the way that your paint unloads from the paintbrush, maybe you'll want to keep that extra paint on bristles. But for now, just for better control, you can always come back for more paint. As you unload your paint from the brush for the first time, be aware of the beads of paint that are left to the sides of the brush. Flatten those areas out. Take that paint and continue to spread it. You want your paint to be as flat and as even as possible. Take the paint pretty close to the lines, but you actually still wanna see the lines at this point. This will help you correct and create straighter lines for the finished product. I also hold my paintbrush differently than I would a pen or a pencil. When I write, I use my index finger on the top to guide a pen or a pencil. When I paint, I actually use my middle finger as the dominant finger moving my index finger farther back along the paintbrush so it's less likely that the paintbrush pops out of my fingers as I'm twisting and moving 
moving my hand. This is completely subjective. You hold it however is most comfortable for you, but this is something that has worked for me. Another tip for making straight lines, or maybe straighter lines, is to move your elbow more than you move your wrist. There are fewer bones in the elbow, fewer directions it can go, so it's less likely to create small, unsteady movement. When you get close to those lines, just be patient and take your time. Try not to get frustrated if you go out of the lines or you make any kind of mistake or drop paint somewhere you're not supposed to. Just make sure that your paint is completely flat and don't be afraid to kind of wipe away mistakes. Like if you have a paint drip or a beaded line of paint from the side of the paintbrush that gets pushed over the line as you're trying to flatten it out, sometimes that'll happen. When you do try to wipe it off, it may leave a bit of a stain underneath that's perfectly fine. All you need to be able to see are the lines underneath and then down the road, other paint will come and cover up that mistake. Just breathe and be patient with yourself. And if your paint isn't covering as fully as mine, don't be discouraged by that. You probably just have different paint. If you need to make multiple layers of that paint for it to have full coverage, then just do that. It's not a big deal. You take as many layers as you need until you feel good about the painting. I did speed this up to about four times, just for the sake of filming. Just remember that this is about learning your process, becoming comfortable with mistakes, and learning how your paint comes off of your brush, as well as how it covers. Be sure to wipe the excess paint off of your brush. Now and again, even if you're using the same color, you really don't want dried paint to cake to the bristles. And when you go to paint your red and your yellow, expect to need to put several coats of red red and yellow down. Traditionally, they don't usually cover as well as other colors, but just take this time to learn and enjoy and grow your own patience. When you need to rinse between colors, just lightly move your brush around in the water and gently press the bristles against the side of the cup. You don't want to deform or smash the bristles. You're just trying to help wring out some of that color from the bristles. For the primary white portion of the body, I switched to a paintbrush that holds a little bit more paint because the areas are pretty big and open. It allows me to save that time by switching brushes. Because I work with very fluid paint, any thicker wet areas that you see will dry flat. So that's pretty nice. But now that we have that first coat of paint on Gomez, we need to get a little bit of paint on the background. Now I'm not gonna paint the entire canvas. You're, you're welcome to paint it all and make it as pretty and detailed as you want for the background. But my goal here is to show you how to use background paint as a way to frame your subject and to help you correct any mistakes that may have been made. You do not have to paint as quickly as I am. You take all the time that you need to get comfortable with your paint and your paintbrush. And you'll notice that I'm not taking this paint right up to the line. I'm still giving that line a little bit of space, but this is what I would consider the sloppy coat on the background. Just getting that first layer of paint down and trying to be mindful of the lines that create the pixels.
when you're done surrounding Gomez with paint. Just kind of go back through and flatten out any area with excess paint and then allow the background paint to dry, which shouldn't take very long because acrylics dry pretty quickly. This might be a good time to take a stretch break or get something to eat. Once that dries, you want to go back and put in an additional layer of paint. More than likely, you can still see the grid underneath your background paint. And this might take a couple of layers, but you just keep adding layers as neatly and patiently as possible until you get complete coverage. And you can take that line a little bit closer, but try not to overdo it. Now we're really starting to make some progress. Clearly we need to work on the inside and get some more layers on those pixels. The red is also going to take several layers, but you know, I already mentioned that before. I am also gonna take this opportunity to lighten up both grays. I think they're too dark and I'll do that just by adding a little bit of white to both. This is a good time to make any kind of color corrections that you may want. Though, like I said before, precise color matching isn't really the goal of this painting. But if you wanna take that extra step, you go right ahead. And because that red is going to take several layers, I'm going to go ahead and just put another layer on that and the yellow. Don't stress too much. If your lines aren't perfectly straight, do your best to keep them straight, but know that all of your lines can be corrected. The back and forth process of correcting lines helps us to determine and recognize mistakes and face the fear of needing to correct them and moving on with our paintings. Anytime you reach a corner that needs to be painted, it is easiest if you turn your canvas so you can start painting in that corner and pull away from it. That will result in more complete coverage and a straighter line in that corner. And again, don't be afraid to go back and forth with those colors until you get nice, crisp, and straight lines. Taking that extra time to correct yourself is how you get better. If your lines or an individual pixel gets a little wild on the outside, your immediate reaction may be to try to straighten it out with that color. That could result in a pixel that's abnormally large and no longer fits in the grid. Allow that mistake to stay there, continue with your work, because then you can use the background color to come back and correct that mistake. This is just where I begin to make some of that color correction. So it may seem a little weird like I'm putting down the same color on all of the pixels. Remember that I have this sped up considerably. Do not expect to be able to get through this this quickly. Pixel art takes a lot of time, so do not feel discouraged if it takes you a while. Once you get all of that filled in pretty well, we're gonna move to the smaller brushes. This is going to help to correct all the, the lines, little things that you can't do with those larger brushes. And that smaller detail brush on the right is what I'll use to really correct a lot of corners or tiny areas that I can't seem to get just right with that flat edge brush. As you're making your corrections with that smaller flat brush, your canvas should be turning around quite a bit. You should have a little bit more freedom to make 
confident corrections with this brush. If you can't seem to get it perfect, just do the very best that you can. Again, don't be afraid to go back and forth with different colors, correcting things. That's how you learn. But also know that we're gonna go back into it with the detail brush to make further and more precise corrections. I apologize for this being a little out of focus, but I still think it gets the point across. One of the final bits of this painting is using the background color to tighten up some of the outside mistakes, and I wanted to show a close-up of how that's done. You want to start by unloading some of that paint from the paintbrush a little bit farther away from the line than you're going to be painting. That way you don't have a line or a bead of paint that accidentally gets pushed over the pixel line. And then gradually as you need it, you can pull that paint closer before dipping your paintbrush back into the palette. Remember to use your elbows as much as you can for this motion. You might have to move your wrist a little bit, but it helps if that's minimal. If you're having difficulties making straight lines with your paint, consider thinning your paint out. It can be difficult to make long straight lines with thicker paint. Just give it a try, and if it's not something that you feel works, then you can go back to your thicker paint. But acrylics will tend to thicken over time as they're out because they begin to dry. So sometimes it's necessary to thin them back out. At this point, you're in the home stretch and you should start to feel pretty good about where you are in the painting. If not, that's okay. You can either go back and continue to correct some of your pixels or just accept that it's a learning experience and trust that you'll get better over time. Either way is perfectly fine and it's all about what you want to get out of these lessons and what you hope to accomplish with acrylic paint. So at this point in the painting, just take the time to relax and feel good about these little details that you're correcting. This is all about your journey. This is where we're gonna take the time to clean up the eyes, get more paint on them. The biggest takeaway from this is if you mess up one of the eyes, that's okay. Just make sure you don't have a bunch of excess paint on it, let it dry, go back with white and correct, let that dry, and then try it again. And if you're really struggling, try using that very small detail brush. Unlike any other pixel in this sprite, these are the only standalone pixels. So you have to worry about all four sides of them. So just take your time and do your best. This will get easier with practice.
And then to finish this, I'm just going over the white in some areas. And then I'll take that small detail brush and make a couple of corrections. You can go as far with this as you want. Just be sure that you're doing it freehand. Don't use any straight edges, masking tape, anything like that. If it looks a little wiggly, but you did your best, that's all you can ask of yourself. Just keep practicing and it will get easier. Down in the description, I'll have a link for you with several sprites that you can practice with. They'll be along the same difficulty as this. And then next week, we're gonna shrink these pixels down, add a little bit of scenery, introduce a tiny bit of color blending, but it's all still pixelated. If you wanna keep following along with the series, you're welcome to subscribe to the channel. You can leave any questions or comments below, or you can just contact me on Twitter. But we're not quite done yet. One of the most important parts of this process is cleaning your paintbrushes the moment you are done with your painting. Don't procrastinate, don't wait, and definitely do not just throw your brushes into a cup of water and let them set there. It will ruin them. If you get to the point where you have a bunch of dirty, dried, and paint caked paintbrushes like this, that's a problem. You don't want to ruin your brushes, as well as not have a brush handy when you need it. If you kept your brushes clean along the way, you might not need any more than just a little bit of soap and water. But if they're in rough shape, you can grab one of the two brush cleaners that I listed in the materials video to clean them up as best as you can to get them ready for your next painting. Remember that the longer they set, the harder they will be to clean and the more likely you are to accidentally ruin them. For this natural brush cleaner, it's gonna take a little bit more work, but if natural is your priority, this is the way to go. Carefully dip your brush into the cleaner, make sure that it's mixed up properly beforehand, and then work it into the bristles. Do not smash your bristles. Let it set there for a little while, and then run it underwater, gently agitating the brush against your palm or another surface to work the paint loose. If it doesn't do it the first time around, then just put a little bit more on there and try it again. If you need something a little more immediate, then move over to the Winsor Newton Brush Cleaner and Restorer. You don't wanna put this in a plastic cup, you actually wanna put this in glass or metal, and you don't wanna fill it up too high, just enough to cover the bristles. Don't leave the brushes in there for too long. If they're in really bad shape, you can leave them in there for maybe 10 minutes, something like that. But if you try leaving them in there overnight, there is a chance, and I know this from personal experience, that the cleaner will also remove the glue and the furl, and your bristles will all just come out. <laughs> So don't do that. First, you never wanna just dump a bunch of chemicals down your drain, but it is safe to rinse your brushes, particularly if you have a public source of water because everything is safely diluted and purified. And importantly, you wanna have some kind of screen to put over your drain. You don't want paint particles going into the water or your pipes for that matter. After a couple of minutes, you'll notice that the paint brushes start to break free. And if you carefully push them, that'll allow more of the cleaner to get between those bristles. Now these are pretty caked on and dried, your paintbrushes shouldn't be in this shape, but if they are, this will help. Put a bit of soap into the palm of your hand and carefully agitate your brush to remove the cleaner and any bits of paint that remain. You may need to take your nail across some of the bristles to get stuff that's really stuck in there, but the process shouldn't be too painful. If anything, this might convince you to wash your brushes immediately after use. Then all you need to do is give your brushes a good rinse, set them upright, or hang them to dry, but you can also carefully lay them out on a towel. Just make sure that the bit bristles aren't bent or they'll dry bent and then you are ready to go for your next painting. Okay, and now we're done. I'll catch you guys next week.